raise it. And there was such a huge charity focus in some of these pageants as well. And, we was, and that's really where um, our directorship kind of started because we said, we want to change this. Yeah. There's so much good to be had in these pageants, but then there's so much negative stuff that's happening as well. Nobody spoke to each, other, spoke to each other and it was like the worst atmosphere. And it went on for hours and hours and hours. It's the fame, but it's the work backstage that makes the game. I'm Christelle and Leve Mandal, your host. Come with me behind the lens and watch their stories unfold. Our next guest here, next guests actually I should say, here on Behind the Lens is a powerful mother and daughter duo here in Australia. They are the directors of Miss and Mr. Diamond Australia. I'm really excited to hear more about their backstory. What's really the true purpose and story behind their pageant system and how things are run in Miss and Mr. Diamond Australia. So please welcome onto Behind the Lens, Charlie and Morgan Mancini. Wonderful, please welcome onto Behind the Lens mother and daughter duo, Charlie and Morgan Mancini, the directors, co-directors of Miss and Mr. Diamond Australia. Hello, it's Hello. lovely to be here. Thank you for having us. I can't I can't wait. I'm so excited to know more about like the backstory of your work. Cause you guys, I've been watching your pageants. Ever since I got into the entertainment industry, actually, I've heard a lot about your pageants oh. and, and how it's impacted people. I think the first person I've ever met who's been in your pageant was Destiny Lyons, and she's had an incredible time. So we're obviously going to go into more detail on how it is now, but I know a lot of people will be really interested. What is the backstory or purpose of your pageant? So um, Miss Diamond Australia started all the way back in the UK when I was um, a lot younger. I was um, a young teen and beauty pageants at the time weren't really big or very well known. There was no sort of child pageants around at the time in the UK. And I watched the film Miss Congeniality and I absolutely fell in love. And I literally went running to my mom. I was like, yeah. I want to do that. I want to be Miss Congeniality. That looks amazing. I want to be on that stage. That looks so cool. That's what I want to do. And at the time, the closest pageant that would have been for my age group was Miss England. I was like, that's it. When I'm old enough, Miss England, I'm going to be Miss England. <laughs> um, and my parents were like, yeah, sure. Right. Okay. I was like, nah, yeah. <laughs> and a few years later, um, sort of child and teen pageants started coming in. And then I was absolutely desperate. I said, I want to do a pageant. I really have to do this. Um, and I know you guys were said no so many <laughs> times. Just didn't oh, understand. Yeah. Yeah, we just didn't understand what they were or why she would want to do that. We wanted her to go on and be a doctor. <laughs> like, well, we was like, what, what's all this pageant stuff? You're, you know, you're too short. You know, you're not going to stack up against these other girls. Why would you even consider it? That's what our stance was. But Morgan just did not give up. She applied for every single pageant, yeah. was accepted into so many. And I think it was... After so many years of bugging us, we finally said yes. Agreed. Yeah, and we went. And yeah. it was a whole new world. I mean, it, it. it was. It was like stepping into this whole new we universe. We had no clue what we were doing. No. We didn't understand the dresses. You know, we watched it on the TV and stuff. Mm. We didn't understand fashion wear. Yeah. We, didn't, we didn't have a clue. <laughs> but it, we went. And that was amazing. It was like opening a world. It was. It really was. And we had such a good time, didn't we? We Mum and daughter thing, we, we was like, you know, I was helping her do her hair and her dresses. And I secretly really, really enjoyed it. Mm. Um, it was stressful at the beginning. I was like trying to stack up yeah. with these other girls. Um, it was very hard. I mean, coming into the pageants as they were back then, that very it very much was that stigma of, you do have to be tall, you do have to be a certain size, Absolutely. you do have to look a certain way and act a certain way. And I remember 
being next to all these other girls and I must have been the shortest because I'm only five foot tall so I'm dinky compared to and they're all model height because they've all come from modeling agencies so I'm tiny and they're like this high and I'm like hi everyone oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like mum like you're never gonna win like you I have did. to I be set, tall I, I set her expectations straight away I'm like you're not gonna win but just have fun so like, I can still try, I can do this, it's not about I said, yeah, go yeah. out there, have a go, but, you know, forget it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and I think that was the seed. That was, that was, that was, that was the seed. seed of, why is it, it's why sh it shouldn't be about your height. Surely anybody of any height should be able to do these things. This, this isn't modeling. Um, this isn't walking down a, 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 a runway for modeling clothes as such. There shouldn't be these height limits and these size limits and all these other things that come into it. Like, well, why is it? And there was such a huge charity focus in some of these pageants as well. And, we was, and that's really where um, our directorship kind of started because we said we want to change this. Yeah. There's so much good to be had in these pageants, but then there's so much negative stuff that's happening as well like there was there's so many uh, like little things that happened in these pageants which were like that's not fair we want to change this there was definitely um favoritism there was definitely um favoring towards the taller contestants the 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 slimmer contestants and those girls maybe those girls who had worked really hard never got a look in it's like well yeah. shouldn't it be about the work that you put in and it shouldn't it be about the, the charity work that, that that you've done so it that's kind of where miss down australia came from because yeah. so we started out as face of purity in the uk we ran two pageants there and then we immigrated to Australia and there came Miss Diamond Australia to celebrate yeah. the beauty and diversity of every individual, as we say. Yeah. Um, and we really do um, have a strong focus on that charity aspect and um, the public appearances and the um, providing opportunities and platforms for people to grow in, um, in you know, like to, to, to give them life experiences that they can go on to use. like you know interviews and self-confidence and job interviews and all those things that yeah. um you know from contacting agencies and all of those kinds of things there's so yeah. many little things that we incorporate into the pageant that can help people mm. later down the line um so it's not just about being a beauty pageant obviously yeah. it still is and we still love that portion of it but yeah. <laughs> mm. that's good that's really incredible so it kind of started from where you started joining and you saw all of these flaws in mm, the system yeah. and you wanted to change that so yeah. when was the first was it 2016 your first one here in australia that's correct yeah, yeah. 2016 and mm -hmm. from there you've just been doing it every single day <laughs> yeah <laughs> and way bigger than we ever uh, yeah. had imagined it yeah. would have gotten it we started with this tiny little pageant yeah. in a tiny little venue in yeah. a fish ridge <laughs> and then we, we yeah. thought we would test the water mm. because we'd run it for two years in england and we had to break the news and tell people that we were leaving and it was quite sad mm. and we we continued to get messages when's your next pageant we were like we're so sorry we've moved to australia um, we we coming here, we had no concept of, you know, what pageants were like in Australia, for example. But I think you joined a pageant, didn't you? And you was going to start off entering pageants mm. again. And then there was just one day we was like, should we should we try it here? Mm. Should we just see what happens? And we did. And we we came up with this beautiful name of Miss Diamond Australia. Um, it was the most beautiful thing we could think of. So. Um, we was really sort of invigorated from that and, and that's how it started. And we started to get applications in and mm. we thought, okay, it, it could happen. Um, and then we just went for it, obviously. And yeah, here we are now. <laughs> and you've just kept the ball rolling. You're doing an incredible job to still be doing it from 2016. That's really cool. Let's kind of backtrack a little bit. I'm kind of interested why Morgan was so intrigued to join yeah. the pageant system. I, it really did come from watching Miss Congeniality and I don't know why and I don't know exactly what, what about it because most people watch that film and think this big that this is this is a gimmick and what, what are these pageants these are just oh, I want world peace you know and it's and that's where the stigma of, of pageants comes from I think I must have just seen those good bits of pageants. I think it was all of the, the girls in the dressing room, all of the states coming together and like, the, like it's those <laughs> bits of the pageants that we all love today. 
where everybody gets together from all walks of life and make friends from across the countries and across you know across the, the globe um yeah all coming together and having this great experience together like look how much fun they're having look at being on stage look at learning all these routines it just looks so like so much fun representing your country your state or wherever your hometown on stage with all these other people and obviously the crowns and the sashes but definitely <laughs> <laughs> i was like who would want one of those yeah. i was so desperate to win a crown and a sash i have to say i was like yeah. oh my god i'd love to have my own sash <laughs> yeah. i mean it's definitely very sparkly and pretty i mean who wouldn't want it you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly right <laughs> now i'm also kind of curious on the mum's side so you you were saying you know you're not really sure what it's about you've never like even try to inject any ideas of joining pageantry for her she's just just kind of come up to you and yeah, she told honestly, you she really wanted to do it i would get i would see the mail coming through the mailbox i'm like what the heck is this you know it was like morgan there's mail for you and then she'd sit and literally read it over and over and over, all the information and stuff and um, you know, there was an entrance fee and it wasn't ever near our house. So it was always going to be a big step for us to go somewhere and stay in a hotel, um, that kind of thing. And the dresses and all of that. And it just all seemed too big and too much of a ordeal to go through. I think mm -hmm. it was just easier to say no. Um, mm -hmm. but then, you know, when we finally did do it, um, I could see, um, a shy Morgan. I know she had like potential and stuff like she was always jumping in front of cameras when she was little but actually putting her in the spotlight to see this shy girl from the country go and you know mingle with all these other girls it was like a real um sort of confidence thing it, it really was for her and when watching her up on stage you know that you have that mum proud moment i literally was in tears to see my little girl come out on that stage it was just the most beautiful thing i've ever ever experienced and i just thought wow this you know i've got to do this again um yeah i'm watching her compete and stuff mm -hmm. but you know <clears throat> when she's come off the stage in tears perhaps or something on, on an occasion that's heartbreaking but it was like I know she was still getting a lot out of it. It was making her stronger, you know? So, so you, you were seeing transformation from her participating into these pageants, even if the result wasn't what she wanted or it was exactly what she wanted. There was some kind of lesson that she um, learned through that and she came out as a better person or a stronger person, like you said. A hundred percent, absolutely hundred percent. I remember there was an occasion when Morgan was raising money for charity and I didn't, I didn't really want to get involved, you know, I kind of left her to it. And she had like three bucks in her, you know, bucket or whatever. And I thought, let's just put your tiara and sash on and go around um, the little village. And we went into all the shops doing Morgan. Mm -hmm. we was like, would she sponsor us for an event? And there were people that gave us like five pounds. Um, and it was, it was like, oh, hold on. Even by doing that, going into a shop and saying, would you consider sponsoring us? you're actually building those skills and those confidence and that communication and and everything kind of when we finally sat on that sofa and we looked at each other and we we literally looked at each other and we mm. looked, we said let's run our own every single experience and um interaction that we'd had it all came together at that moment and we we, we knew pretty much how we was going to run this yeah that's so, really cool. Both sides came together for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you were kind of going through pageants, I'm, I'm. Since you're both here, I want to hear both sides. So the competitor and the parent who's like, <laughs> like supporting her, um, from behind the scenes or behind the stage or in the audience. When you are going through these competitions, what are kind of some of the challenges that you experienced aside from you know being shorter, not quite meeting the height requirements or things like that. What were some of the internal things? Did you have to overcome any internal challenges for you? Oh, de definitely. Um, it was a huge step outside of my comfort zone, even though it's something that I had always wanted to do and always, and you know, it's that moment that I'd been waiting for all that time. As soon as I stepped into it, it was like a deer in headlights because there was all these absolutely beautiful girls. Um, and it was like, 
oh my god what am I doing you kind of get this like reality moment hit mm-hmm. you and you're like what am I doing here I'm not like because like we are we were from the country these girls are from like the, the, the you know the and, yes. city girls and they were all yeah. so confident yeah and they were so out there and I was like oh no what am I doing <laughs> yeah um, and I was like and we really didn't have any idea what we were doing and um in, even in terms of like outfits and stuff like my outfits just like weren't even matching up to theirs and it was just like oh god what am I doing and it was um it that aspect was quite interesting and but I could see how these girls were interacting with each other and I was like I want to be I, you know it kind of pushes you to um I guess have that that confidence level you're like I want to be that that confidence um you know so I mean but it was very very difficult um being in that situation for the first time I mean, other things that were very difficult in the, some of these pageants, I mean, pageants have changed a lot since then, but for example, swimwear used to be a huge con- a huge part of these pageants and we were only young teens. And I do remember their scoring system in one of these pageants was to hold up, <laughs> it was to hold up school cards at the end. So the judges would actually hold the school cards up. And I remember doing my swimwear and I don't know why I did it, but looked back at the scores and saw like three, two, two, because it was at five, like to see t- to see a two being held up. I'm like, and it devastated me. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, it was the, it was soul crushing to have to see that. Um, what, what I thought was such a confidence boosting moment in that moment, turning around and seeing those scores just came all crashing down. And that was very difficult. And I remember the year following, it wasn't just held up on scorecards. They actually said it out loud on the microphone. On the microphone. And it was, it crushed, you could just see it crushing all these girls around you when you could hear yeah. their scores being read out. That was hard. Yeah. Yeah. And there's been so many little things like that ha- that's happened in all these pageants, which um, have been very difficult. Um, and it m- really does push that drive to want to improve it because you're like, this could have been so good had it not have been for those those little things it have been such a great event for everyone it would have been you know but yeah mm. they showed it to you literally the second that you're on stage yeah that so can be oh yeah. my goodness <laughs> so literally like as you see in the movies they put their cards up <laughs> yeah I'm not joking. It really was. Oh my goodness. I, I've never seen that in real life actually. And I'm no. glad they don't do that here. I don't think they do at least. No, no. I think that I think it was the only, it was meant to be um a new innovative way of doing the scoring, which would technically I guess they was going for openness of scoring, but I think that's way too open. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little too much out there. Like you're still there in the moment and enjoying it. And yeah. if you don't get the outcome that you worked for yeah. or something that's going to build you up it can be like you said it would like hot like gut-wrenching yeah mm-hmm. it's kind of like a whole a whole bunch of weight just went yeah. on you because it's it's not the scores that you expect like you went out there had fun feeling so confident and you're like it's going to be such a good experience and yeah. in their eyes they're like it's not up to the part that they wanted yeah. it's just like you didn't have to do it in front of everyone because in that yeah. moment, you really should be like, oh my God, yes, I did it. I got on stage, yeah. um, you know, and, you know, everyone should feel happy about what, what they did. You know, obviously no one's perfect and no one's walk is perfect and we all have ways to improve. But in that moment, you should just really like, you know, give yourself a pat on the back that you got off on stage and you did it. And then to see a score <laughs> so low yeah. and especially having no context behind that score. Like, yeah. you know, at the end of a pageant, a lot of pageants give back your scores and feedback, but that, that comes with feedback and you say, you know, this time you got an eight out of 10 because maybe you did this, this and this, but here's, here's all the things that you did really well. You know, it comes <laughs> with some context yeah. and it comes with some, okay, that's where I can learn and grow and improve. But you know, just to see a straight up low score in that moment, yeah, terrible. Hard I remember that. <laughs> like we won't ever be doing that. No. <laughs> oh, how did you overcome that? How did you overcome those kind of barriers that that put onto you? See, that's the, the interesting thing is that in that moment could have stopped me from ever doing pageants again because that was our first one as well. So we could have gone away from that and said, "This is horrendous. We're never doing this again." Um, but we didn't. We came back, we did another one and we, you know, and 
because there are so many good things about those events and the, these pageants that we were doing that just so far away outweighed the, the negatives. Yeah. And you kind of have an inside talk and a mental talk to yourself that you'll come back bigger and stronger. And if that does happen again, then you'll be able to handle it a lot better and you can feel yourself growing as a person that you're, you, you know, even though you have been put through these negative situations, you can now handle them better. And then, you know, and I kind of actually almost in a weird way enjoyed those experiences because you do at the end of it feel better for it because, you know, you, you know how to handle that yeah. and you can take the losses and you, you know, you, you can take the kick downs and you can handle it gracefully. <laughs> To <laughs> lose gracefully, she learned that <laughs> to lose very gracefully. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, get you know, getting to see everyone and experience it is just it's it's a kind of fun and a kind of experience that is just you just can't get it anywhere else. Yeah. it's just it's almost magical, and it feels like one day feels like a week, and it's like so much happens, and it's just absolutely incredible. And for all the bad that happens. You just can't get that experience anywhere else and mm. that's what we want to recreate for people over and over again because it is just something that has just been absolutely incredible and all these opportunities that i've been given and all the people that i've met and the experiences that i've had have just been amazing i want everybody to be able to experience it <laughs> because i know we, we do get parents saying to us my daughter's entered your pageant what is this like what are these pageant things like, yeah why would she want to do <laughs> this and you're like <laughs> just come and do it <laughs> you'll see why you'll get the bug it's amazing i can promise you and it, it just intrigues more and more people because they can kind of see the transformation, win or lose. There is some kind of transformation, as Charlie has mentioned. There's a transformation every single step of the way. Now, for you as a mum and you're seeing your daughter go through kind of those difficulties on stage, what was that like for you? I, caught, I kind of almost half expected some of it. And that's what I think I didn't want her to do it because of that. Okay, so that's the protective side. But then once I've seen her go through it, I know that she'll get over it and she'll be stronger. And I kind of, I, I can see sort of both sides of it. And it's like, it was, it was sad that I had to watch my daughter in tears when it was something she wanted to do and have a great time. And then I see her in tears and I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, why, what, why on earth did you put yourself through this? But like Morgan says, it's like, you can, you can learn from it. And I, and I kind of then sort of realized, I thought she got so much out of it the first time, regardless of the negative thing, you do look forward and you think, okay, well, next time we mm. will change your outfit and we'll do this and we'll do your hair different, you know, that kind of thing. And you think I'll have another go. Um, so yeah, I mean, there was one time we was at Miss England in Bristol mm. um, heat and um, the car. Oh, this was something we've changed. I know pageants still do it, but we actually specifically changed it for Miss Diamond was the on stage question. Uh, it broke my heart watching her up on stage. She was asked a question. Uh, what does friendship mean to you? Oh, no, that was Face of the Globe. Oh, Face of the Globe. Sorry, <laughs> Face of the Globe that was, not Miss England. And it just she stumbled she didn't know what to say she almost fainted it was a million degrees yeah. in the heat and I just thought she just I just thought why are we doing this you know you, you've just got up there we was all prepared and you you've mucked up your question and it's like again and I but I in myself I thought she'll learn from this you know and we mm. we did we, we just felt that again was another seed that was planted for us that if we ever had to put anybody through that, it would be awful. So we changed it. So we, we don't ask an open-ended question for girls to stumble. We actually ask them, what's your chosen charity and why did you choose it? Because then they know it's coming from inside. They can explain exactly what their charity is and exactly why they chose it. So they'll be able to speak confidently on stage um, and that's what we're wanting. We're wanting to boost that confidence, bring them up, not push them down. Mm, that's true. That's really interesting how you kind of altered 
that part of the pageant pageant systems out of because experience of that. you had yeah reason so as, aside from the challenges what would you say has been your favorite moments from as a competitor oh. i think watching a child go from a very shy individual to coming through maybe one, two, or maybe even three pageants. You mentioned Destiny Lions. I think that for, that for me, watching her grow, and a number of other people as well, has been one of the most um, amazing moments for me. Mm. What would be one of your favorites? I think when it, my most, no, the, the memories that resonate with me the most, the bits that I remember about the pageants the most, I have to say, is spending time with the other contestants backstage. Um, because you're meeting all these people that you've never met. Mm. Like people, you, so many personality types from all walks of life that you just, you didn't realize these people existed because normally you just surround yourself with like n normally who are very similar to you and who are just in a, a closer area to you but getting to meet all these people from all these different walks of life with there's such amazing personalities and such amazing stories to tell we've met like so many eccentric people oh gosh um, we have <laughs> had, had so many amazing experiences <laughs> just from that it, like that has been one of the best things um that I've, I've had i've been able to experience secondary to that obviously stage time is like the fashion wear for me has always been my most favorite thing um because you get to wear your, your sparkly outfit and you get to to i get to do that bit in this congeniality that i always <laughs> wanted to do i was to strut it up and down the stage so that's my two things is yeah getting to meet all the other contestants back and spending that time with them and their parents as well mm. we've had some amazing experiences oh, and we've met some amazing people definitely that you yeah. just you're like where else would i have met you kind of people <laughs> yeah it's been a crazy time <laughs> this is incredible honestly i'm so glad that you both are here speaking to me because i can see the two sides of the story yeah. you know the parent and the contestant <laughs> and i love it because you mentioned at the start of this interview you were interested in the pageant industry and joining because of meeting new people mm. and i love how that's is probably the most memorable moments for you is meeting the people backstage getting to know them and getting to building up the confidence and learning how to mingle with different kinds of people because like you said you know in our day-to-day -day life we hang out with people who are most likely similar to us yeah? yeah and also with tali her saying that she she loves the transformation that you went through the confidence and everything that you built and the fact that you guys are doing this together to allow other people to experience that as well is really cool mm -hmm. i think that's what it is it's like so we're many giving times. them something that we had <laughs> yeah. and we did and we achieved and we're almost trying to replicate it but in in getting rid of all the hard bits mm -hmm. and making beautiful things like yes. i think really importantly um our icebreaker mm -hmm. like morgan says we get to meet everybody that was another thing i really clearly remember going to this very first pageant um sitting in this room with a sea of other contestants and everybody staring at each other and going oh my god look at that girl over there oh my god look at that girl over there oh gosh and nobody, and spoke, to each nobody other spoke to each other and it was like the worst atmosphere and it went on for hours and hours and hours but by the time we got into the like i think it was five hours later people started to talk to each other when they're getting ready and stuff and we then started to meet these amazing people and it was just all too late. Mm. It, then it was the pageant and then we was gone home, but it was that interaction part that we wanted to, to get rid of that really frosty reception. We, we have our icebreaker on the first day to get everybody dancing and having a great time. And then we have our pageant the second day because by that point, everybody's great friends already. Mm. So we actually get rid of all of that breaking the ice stuff early on as well. And I think that's a really important thing. Mm. Yeah. Now, why do you feel like the atmosphere is like that? 
for <laughs> five <laughs> hours. <laughs> it was awful. We were just stuck there staring at everybody. Yeah, it was. And I think it's I think it's because a lot of those people in that room, it is the first time that they've ever experienced anything like this. You don't really know what you should be doing. You don't really you don't know these people. Um, you don't know what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. You you know, some people come in into it thinking you know that they need to be acting a certain way yeah, or speaking a certain I way like i mean it is a competition some people are sizing yeah. up their competition and there's 100%. a bit of hostility there yeah <laughs> it's like that. um you're like oh yeah no she's nice yeah that's a good one yeah. <laughs> you know you are sizing up your competition and having that icebreaker um right early on um really does help and it kind of sets the tone for the rest of the competition that we are here to have fun we are you know you, you don't have to be here to act a certain way um you know this you know this this isn't miss congeniality but <laughs> so you don't you know it's not you don't have to be that perfect uh, pageant girl that everybody thinks you have to be um you you can have fun let you know you know i think we also those. yeah and i think we also um sort of explain to everybody we're actually a team Everybody in our pageant, we actually all work together as a team and we actually encourage them to look out for each other, you know, care about each other right until that moment for you when you step on the stage, mm -hmm. then that's your own personal moment. But all of the time up to there and afterwards, we are a team. Mm -hmm. And I think people kind of feel safe in that environment. Yeah, I've seen that as a lot as well when people talk about Miss and Mr. Diamond Australia, they talk about family. Yeah. And how they feel that there's a good and strong sense of community and it's very nurturing and caring. And the fact that you guys have been able to build that, build a community that's like that is amazing. Because I know there's, like you said, for you, the, the experiences that you had, some, some of them weren't very nice. Some right. of them were very cold <laughs> and you guys altered that. You know, when you created your own system, you were able to manipulate things and seeing that you two really valued the sense of family or a sense of belonging and sense of being like a team kind of reflects onto everyone else who's joining. Mm. So yeah. do you feel like this pageant industry, the experiences that you've had together has brought your mother and daughter bond stronger? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. You know, it's like, is so many memories that we've made out of it that have that have definitely brought us closer together and then obviously directing together we're always you know together directing yeah. as well so often we you know we'll be saying oh do, do you remember that out of nowhere we'll just be driving in a car and be like yeah do you remember that 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 you know that lady that we met in that pageant yeah. years ago you know we'd end up having conversations about all yeah. these people that we've met the experiences that we've had and it's just been absolutely incredible really we always joke as yeah. well because like we actually Funnily, we're working together again. So we actually drive to work together. <laughs> and um, we end up having, we always joke that we've got half each of our brains. When you put them together, they're dangerous. <laughs> because we kind of feed off each other and we kind of build. So I'll suggest something and then Morgan will say, no, 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 no. And I'll say, but what about this? And then she'll say, no, no, but what about this? And then between us both, we actually can formulate really strong ideas as well so we actually really work well together in that respect and that's, that's really cool really brought us together through yeah. everything we've experienced so that's awesome yeah. i love that you guys are working together because i work together with my mom as well and we have lots of fun <laughs> yeah. and we bond with the projects that we're doing to see another mother and daughter doing similar things is honestly makes me feel so excited to meet another <laughs> another power mother and daughter duo <laughs> they're doing some incredible job i know i've heard of their pageants before i've heard of their shows and events that they've been doing but to actually sit down and chat with them today is such an honor and a pleasure because i've learned why they're doing everything that they're doing has a purpose they're not only making a change in themselves as the directors of these pageants but also in the people that are participating and also the support systems of those who are competing in these competitions you know the pageant system sometimes it can be a little ugly but these girls have seen it all and they've changed it they've shifted it to become an absolutely amazing experience for everyone one that's going to put them through a transformation 
that will bring the best out of them at the end of the journey, win or lose. There is a winner in all of us. With or without the crown, we can do some incredible work. I'm sure that you guys would have learned some amazing things from Charlie and Morgan today, whether you're a contestant, interested contestant, or a supporter yourself. Make sure that you are liked in all of our social media pages and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will see you all next time.